This is the 47th and final season of basketball in Cole Fieldhouse. The students lined up all afternoon for a front row seat and have been cheered for the last couple of hours. Why not? Number two, Illinois has come to town trying to become the first non-conference team in a dozen years to beat Maryland on this historic floor. And Illinois has got the guard to do it. Frank Williams, well, what a backcourt matchup for him tonight as he takes on Juan Dixon. And there's a battle up front, too, with Brian Cook for Illinois taking on the double-double man for the Terps, Lonnie Baxter. The fans are settling in for a little luck they've rubbed Testudo's nose. Number two, number four, we'll tip it off in two minutes. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge is presented by 989 Sports, only on PlayStation and PlayStation 2, and in part by Lexmark, passion for printing ideas, and by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. We welcome you inside Cole Fieldhouse, one of the best matchups ranking-wise ever. Starting the ACC Big Ten Challenge, presented by 989 Sports. Number two, Illinois in blue. Number four, Maryland in white. Mike Tirico, Len Elmore, glad to have you with us. A call. The Turks control the tip. We're underway. When you look at these two teams, Mike, it's like a midterm in organic chemistry for both of them. At this point in time, this is where they understand exactly what they have at this point in the season. Steve Blake is the junior point guard. He's going to have a chance to set the all-time college assist record if he hangs around his last couple of years. Frank Williams shut him off. Ten for Juan Dixon to shoot, and it's over Corey Bradford. The rebound by the man we featured at the top, 6'10", Brian Cook, who pitches to Frank Williams. Terrific guard for Illinois. And the kick out is Archibald to Bradford, whose shot was blocked, but Archibald back underneath. And he will come to the free throw line. Show you the starters for both teams here tonight. Illinois, it really is the three guards for Bill Self in opening 5-0 and here in this 2001-2002 season. On the Pepsi Twist lineups, Sean Harrington along with Corey Bradford, Frank Williams, Robert Archibald is shooting free throws, and Brian Cook. And the Maryland guys, familiar. They've been around forever with Juan Dixon and Steve Blake at the guards. Byron Mouton, Taj Holden, and Lonnie Baxter. Up front. Baxter picked up the foul as first, and Archibald, 6'11", senior, has the first point of the night. And right away, we had an opportunity to see where this game is going to be won or lost in the backcourt. On the defensive end for Maryland, Juan Dixon comes up big and matching up with Corey Bradford, but it's that experience of Bradford that really got the free throws here. Cook ripped the rebound away, but turned it over with the travel. Our officials tonight, Mike Wood, Frank Scagliata, and John Clockerty. The third year of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. We see all nine ACC teams in action. Eight of the nine games on ESPN and ESPN2. Four tonight, four tomorrow. Lonnie Baxter inside, missed it. Cook the rebound for the Illini. Right away, Maryland wants to go inside. Go after Robert Archibald. That was an almost four fouls per game. Bradford lost it on the way up. Leak on the push for Maryland. Dixon goes to the line and strikes three. Classic point guard play, Stephen Blake on the penetration, draws the D and kicks. Maryland's first hoop of the night, the two-point lead, hooked from the outside. Can shoot that, although not the best option. And Maryland will have it after the foul on Illinois. The Archibald's first. Well, this has been a 5-4 set the last couple of years the ACC winning the first two ACC Big Ten challenges Illinois looking for its first win they played Duke a couple of times that hurts the number and Maryland's loss to Wisconsin last year was the bottom in what ended up being a great season the Terrapins finally getting to the final four Dixon all five for the home team when you talk about the matchup none of those teams exactly ran away from the other it just shows you how close the strength of the two conferences are. That's what makes this a terrific matchup at this time in the season. Williams, well defended by Blake. And after the rebound by Baxter, Blake tried to push it to Holden, but too far. 
It's going to be a case of defense right here. Dixon and Bradford. We saw earlier Dixon blocking Bradford's shot. Here, Dixon decides he wants to post Corey Bradford up. Bradford, not known for his defense, really didn't have the effort on that one. The junior, Frank Williams, Ian Blake. Good matchup for juniors tonight. Holden, check and cook in the man defense. Actually, that's a good matchup for Maryland. Holden, very comfortable playing out on the perimeter, even though he's 6'11. Archbald tees up Williams, and Frank rattles home the first field goal in five attempts for the visitors. Yeah, Frank Williams gives it to Illinois when they need it. He's not a guy that's gaudy offensively, but he has a sense of drama. Dixon trying to get a quick one over Williams. Mouton got among the big guys and feeds Baxter. If there was an area where Maryland was concerned, particularly Gary Williams, it was the ability to rebound with Illinois. Byron Mouton right now setting the tone on the offensive end. Bradford at the back door shut by good defense. Tees up Harrington. Williams is not going to lose Blake on those quick moves as often as he does other opponents. But you know what? Sometimes he doesn't need to lose them. Frank Williams, our old school player, just likes to get on the hip and make something happen. Advantage Steve Blake there. It's five on four the other way with Archibald out of the play for a moment. Dixon. Got too cute trying to find Baxter. Bradford wants to go it all the way. And Corey connects. And that's something you would not have seen from Corey Bradford last year. Saddled with a knee injury, really didn't have the explosiveness. But you look at that body, you know he can shoot the jumper. The thing that's made him more effective is his ability to go to the hole. Steal by Williams, took it right from Blake. Now he's going to try to drive it on him. Frank Williams, five of the Illinois eight. The Illini take the lead. I think the word is nifty. <laughs> that's Frank Williams. He won't blow you away with his speed, but he changes direction so well and changes speed. Baxter try to establish the inside and Cook's foul trouble is an issue very often for Illinois as he picks up the personal there. His first team second. Bill Self who in back to back years has taken different teams to the Elite Eight. Tulsa and then comes to replace Lon Kruger and had a great job last year and Gary Williams finally got to that final four and as he should be at his alma mater, number two behind Lefty in terms of uh, all-time coaching victories. He's put so much energy into this program. And to see it pay off last year was rewarding. And when you come to this place and hear the ovation for Gary when he walks out on the court, it's just got a different feel to it now after that validation of the Final Four last year. Well, absolutely. It's affirming for Gary. The Final Four, five Sweet 16s in the last eight years definitely deserves it. Baxter makes the free throw. And we have a timeout. All even at eight. 4:15 gone by. Still to come tonight. We'll take a look at the other matchups in the third ACC Big Ten Challenge. Get you ready for a great week of hoops and get a sneak peek at the future home of the Terps. One of the last big games in this old barn. The ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports. All even at eight. This is the first of four games on ESPN and ESPN2, NC State in Columbus, tipping off in about 20 minutes. Duke and Iowa follow us on ESPN, and then Minnesota, number 23, Wake Forest, it's at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Switch back and forth, some great matchups. Five more tomorrow, and we'll show you those matchups in a little bit. A little pressure out of the timeout. The trap by Mouton and Blake. Williams got out of it. And then he speeds a cook. Oh, that was a nice job of attacking for Paulia with good court vision. Didn't force the issue, but Maryland hasn't really applied a lot of pressure this year. They haven't forced the number of turnovers that they normally did. That's where they get their offense. They're much more comfortable now in the half court. Off the ball foul. That's two on Brian Cook. Foul trouble again. The story for the big guy. But one of the reasons you don't want to trap, particularly the good teams, is because they exhibit patience. And then when they find the opening, they attack. Nice job of drawing both defenders. Demir Propalia, whose importance will be even increased because Cook two fouls at the 15-15 mark. Won't see much of him the rest of the half. Dixon missed the rebound by Blandon Ferguson. Well, could see a lot of time tonight. Although Ferguson only goes 6-4, this junior college transfer is very athletic. 
the three from Sean Harrington. Nice distribution of the ball by Illinois. You can tell a veteran team. They find the weakness and they attack. Wake found the opening in the defense after beating Williams. Well, Gary Williams said that for Maryland to be as successful as they were last year, Steve Blake's the guy, or one of the guys that has to step up offensively. Ferguson is stepping up here, Lenny, uh, unsung hero kind of guy. Does a lot of the things that they lose when they lost Sergio McClay. The little stuff. Athletic enough to get it done in a wing position. Well, you know, he epitomizes the kind of guy that Bill Self loves to recruit. You know, around 6'3", 6'4", long arms, athletic. You know, they can get it done on both ends. Full field house here in College Park, Maryland for the first of the nine games in the 2001 ACC Big Ten Challenge. Early lead for Illinois, number two against number four. It's a good opportunity right now to try to execute. Steve Blake's got to get the ball in the hands of some hot shooters. That's one of them right there. Dixon pointing to Holden said I want it there. I'll go get it myself. All blue on the boards. Archibald takes it down. Williams fouled in the backcourt by Juan Dixon. Now that's a mistake by Juan Dixon. A silly foul that'll ultimately come back to bite Maryland simply because Illinois is terrific on the free throw line. Not only did they shoot it well but they've outscored their opponents thus far this year by 60 points on the free throw line. So if you give them the opportunities to beat you on the line with the free ones, they're going to do it. Chris Wilcox, the sophomore, comes in. Lake will take a seat as well as Drew Nicholas checks in for Maryland. This is number 12. And Dixon and Mouton is the small players on the floor. You talk about versatility. There's Ferguson playing the point right now, giving Williams a chance to get in the offense. Archibald has a shot deterred by Baxter. Here comes Nicholas off the floor. I mean that swing guy in the backcourt. Baxter couldn't hang on to the deflection. Maryland out of sync right now, trying to rush things. You know, they're a veteran team. They've got to recognize there's an awful lot of basketball to be played. They've got to work to their strengths and not force it right now. Ten points, four turnovers. First six and a half for Maryland. Archibald. He's off. Here's Mouton. Another sloppy set by Maryland, and this will be a jump ball. And we are not doing the experimental rules with jump balls. It's possession arrow for this game, and it will belong to Illinois. I kind of like the jump ball. I know. Makes yeah. folks coach a little bit, forces those officials to throw it up straight. They've been practicing, make sure they can get the straight toss. Here's tomorrow's ACC Big Ten Challenge schedule. Wisconsin, Georgia Tech starts it on ESPN. The Michigan State, Virginia. Clemson at Penn State. Indiana, North Carolina. Proud, proud program. And then Florida State Northwestern will decide it. And uh, over past years, that last 930 Eastern tip has been the one to decide who won the ACC Big Ten Challenge. On the drive, Ferguson has been very impressive in his first few minutes, but put back by Archibald. And again, there's the bugaboo rebounding. At this point in time, Maryland down seven. They can ill afford to give Illinois a second opportunity. No block out there. Late back in very quickly after the four set for Maryland. The Illini have scored 13 of the last 16 here. Baxter tries to change it. A tough shot. Nothing's coming easy on the offensive end for Maryland. Look, they go out of bounds. Terps keep possession. But possessions haven't been great so far for Maryland. No, they haven't. And it begins here, though, on the offensive end. Look how deeply Ferguson gets in the paint. And that forces everyone to bunch up right under the basket, allows Illinois to get good position. And they've got some guys who definitely can crash the board. Again, we talked about Landon Ferguson, his versatility, playing a little point, playing the forward spot. Good defender guarding Drew Nicholas right now. Actually, he's out of the game, and here comes Sean Harrington. But a nice job by Ferguson running the offense. Landon will take a seat. Also coming in for Illinois, a seven-footer. Uh, yes, this is a seven-footer. Nick Smith at seven-foot-two. You see the drought for Maryland. Well, if you think Maryland was challenged offensively, they got some guys in right now that aren't really accustomed to going one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to have to distribute the ball, execute, back kicks, cuts to get some people open. Holden can hit that. Good rebound, Dixon. Goaltending on Archibald. 
Well, that's the one guy you definitely want to leave out there on the floor, Juan Dixon, who finds a way to score. This time on the offensive glass. And you talk about a nose for the game. Watch him right now. As Bradford turns his head, Dixon knows exactly where he mm. needs to go. Good offensive rebounders gauge where the shooter is taking the shot from and go to the spot where the ball's coming off. And he knows the freshman, Nick Smith. This game is a different tempo than Nick has seen before. And uh, he was not ready for that rebound to come off quick. And a good job to get to it by Juan Dixon. But he knows how to do that. 7-2, shooting from the outside, crashing the boards. Bradford could not finish. Four on three. Good bounce by Wilcox. And Mike, you called the Nick Smith after taking a shot late getting back. And good court vision by Steve Blake. That's what Maryland has to do. Take advantage of the opportunity and not rush, not force. And a turnover by Harrington. Official timeout inside of 12. Bill Selstein saw a seven-point lead evaporate to three. A couple of unbeaten teams meeting up in Springfield, Massachusetts. The Oregon Ducks on the run. Robert Johnson finishes after a beauty of a pass. All of Oregon's five starters so far averaging in double figures. And they're up early on UMass. Mike? Thank you, Pam Ward. Pam and Digger Phelps in the studio for night. One of the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports. Speaking of... Massachusetts and basketball, about 16 World Championships. Coach and GM, the Boston Celtics, Red Auerbach. Here in Chatton basketball, let me talk to him pregame. Same old Red, right? Oh, absolutely. As irascible as ever. But uh, gave me some of the best advice, and that was to stay in school, work my way into the NBA instead of leaving as a junior. And it all seemed to go together. What a, what a great guy. The, Fountain of knowledge. Blake off the timeout, trying to make it a 7-0 Maryland run. But a good rebound for Wilcox, who comes in and energizes this team. I'll tell you what, Chris Wilcox has the greatest potential of any player out there for Maryland. Big, explosive, soft touch. Just a sophomore, just learning this game. That is last touch by Mouton. And Scagliata says it stays here. You know, right now, he's starting to recognize he's an important key to this team. You take a look at him right there. Nice job of being under control after the offensive rebound. And that's the key, not to rush it up, not to horse it up. Recognize where your opportunity might lie. Here's Steele. Kept alive by Bradford. Archibald, nice move, but a better defensive play. Could give Maryland the lead on this trip. Try to add to this 6 0 run. Feeding the hot man Wilcox. Holden's calling for it way out high. The big guys nowhere near the paint. Blake will reset it. And get everyone back to the neighborhood they're supposed to live in. And the home folks recognize good judgment out on the floor. And the completion with the three. 9 0. Turp run. Well, we talked about patience on the Maryland end. They began to exhibit it, and that's how they got back to this point with a two-point lead. Illinois now has to do the same. Williams hasn't taken many shots last few minutes. Wilcox again. Sophomores everywhere. Drew Nicholas tries to cut the slash. Wilcox the feed out of bounds. Off Illinois, no foul. Well, that shot by Frank Williams might have been a little too quick for Bill Self's liking. The fact is, though, they are too good. Both teams are too good just to rush things. They execute very well. They'll find an opening. Williams is on the bench, saw the run happening. Got to get in there and change it. Holden got committed up in the air and bailed out as it's off Illinois. Illinois is 5-0. and They just won a tournament in Las Vegas. Bill Self's team had a couple of close games out there against Penn, who the Illinois staff will tell you is going to be a very good team. And they beat up Georgia Tech badly. But then Southern Illinois gave them quite a game, a three-point win for the Illini, 75-72. Now they've ended up at 5-0. Well, if you look at their schedule, they, in the first six games, including this one, four NBA tournament teams from last year. Gonzaga, Eastern Illinois, Maryland, and Georgia Tech. You know, I think competing is really what this is all about, and he's got a veteran team. They're capable of doing an awful lot. He wants to know where they are right now. Hoping with a good home win in Champaign over Gonzaga. Mouton off the bench, misfired. And it's a Maryland foul. Illinois will have it. 
Here are the games. The good win over uh, Gonzaga, as I mentioned, to open the season by 18. Tonight, Maryland, Arizona coming up on the fourth. You'll see the game against Arkansas, the number five Missouri in their annual battle. Hey, why not? You, know, you gotta, you gotta play him in order to get better. Bill Self, tutored by Larry Brown, Eddie Sutton, Leonard Hamilton. You could see them rub off on his team. It's a great defense. Certainly, the athletic play of the players out here, the kind of guys that he needs in the system. Trapalia missed. Illinois has gone four scoreless minutes. The foul last trip down was Baxter's second. He stays out there and watches New Time give Maryland its largest lead. Timeout, Illinois. It is a 12-0 Maryland run to take this five-point advantage at 8.51, first half. Well, again, Byron Mouton, after good ball movement, finds himself at the top all alone. That's Mr. Energy right there. You let him get started, and he's going to wake everybody up. It's a fist pumper, the raw emotion. The Wisconsin game in this ACC Big Ten Challenge last year was... Uh, the last time we saw Mouton as, as a bench player. They needed his energy in that game. And once he became part of the lineup, that was still present. You see Illinois has gone cold here over the last four minutes. And I believe Bill Self had to talk to his guys about, again, patience, about recognizing opportunities, and just as importantly, spacing. Right now, they're probably a little too anxious and get a little too close to each other, allow the Maryland defensive players to pressure the ball. Now let's check the spacing right now. This Frank Williams at the top. And in Ferguson in the game. His minutes were positive. Most positive minutes tonight. The player off the bench has been Wilcox from Maryland. Tend to shoot. Bradford, or rather, uh, Ferguson tried to drive there. He got fouled. 23, now 13 went up. And Frank Scagliata had the call. Much better concept of how to space guys, how to give guys opportunities to make things happen. That time Ferguson off the dribble created something in the paint. <laughs> and I don't think Gary was <laughs> in agreement with that one. Foul on Taj holding his first. Maryland four fouls. Illinois three. And here is Ferguson. But then again, Gary's hardly ever in agreement <laughs> with the call against the squad. He wants his guys to pick up the tempo. The little signal right there was run. College of Southern Idaho. That's where Ferguson last played ball before the trip to Illinois. That the first points in four and a half minutes. Illinois with some pressure now. Down four. Little one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. Blake thought for a second he had Wilcox open. The door was shut quickly by Ferguson. Landing's minutes have been high impact. Nice job by Blake. Williams trying to clear some space for his three. Dixon the rebound looks for numbers. Blake left, Mouton right. And a foul on the way to the goal. The foul will be on Frank Williams. It's his first. No shots, just a 14 foul. Official timeout. Under eight. Night one of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And perhaps a best game of the whole series. Leads by four. We welcome you back to the house at Lenville. Mike Tirico and the former Maryland All-American. Thank you, Mike. Glenn Elmore. Sorry about that. And last year at Cole Fieldhouse, and this uh, one of the special games in here this year. Of course, the Duke game as well. But this building has been so good because of the atmosphere. It's one of the few barns left in college basketball. Well, it certainly is, and the way this place is structured really lends itself to the noise. It keeps it in and keeps it all focused on the floor, and it lifts the home team, and it has a tendency to hurt. The visitors, there's no question about it. It's a great atmosphere for Illinois to play in. You know, There's experience in this team that went to the Elite Eight last year. Good job defensively by Holden after the Wilcox basket. The low for Wilcox! And now that old barn is rocking again. And that noise has a tendency to distract the visitor. 
and also have some impact. That's on Illinois late getting back. Kropalia silences them for a moment with a three. Yeah, I saw Kropalia putting earplugs yeah, in. Before, so. No, no just kidding. Okay. <laughs> he just shot that one like it, though. The crowd had no effect whatsoever. But then again, that's experience. Six-minute field goal drought stopped there. Juan Dixon couldn't respond with the three. And Kropalia goes up and gets the rebound. He was the MVP of that tournament in Las Vegas, even though he came off the bench for all the games. The cut. Nice. Oh, man. Let's say the two best guys on the floor tonight so far have been off the bench. 54 in white, 23 in blue. Five for the Illini. Say Gary Williams. Time out here. Well, this is how you get the crowd in the game right here on the break. Illinois late getting back. You just throw it up to the stratosphere and let the explosive Chris Wilcox go get it. And again, Wilcox, we talked about his explosiveness. We talked about his athleticism. Runs the floor very well. It's really not a good matchup on the floor for Illinois against a guy like Chris Wilcox. See Wilcox there. He came in with the Terps down five to now up three. And we talked about the Blake assist five tonight, fourth in school history. And, and Blake, in his junior year, if the production is there in terms of the guys who can finish for him, he'll have a chance to get up in that thousand assist rare air that only a couple of ACC guards have seen before. Well, certainly he's gotten comparisons, at least on the assist level, to one of my favorite teammates, John Lucas, who was just an absolute terror out there on the floor and finding people. John had the added job of scoring as well, or the delight of scoring. And the beauty, <laughs> the beauty of Dixon being on this team is it does free Blake up to be mostly a creator. Speaking of creating, beautiful move by the junior out of Long Island, New York, Drew Nicholas. But Drew Nicholas has been struggling offensively, usually relies on that terrific jump shot of his. But that time, he knew what he had to do. And Juan Dixon, holy cow. A pocket pick from Juan, who has nine. He expects Sean Harrington to turn his back on Dixon. That time, he tried to face him up and go by. He went by empty-handed. Dixon's led the conference in steals the last two years. After the timeout, four for Maryland. Playing with two fouls, Cook travels. Again, we talked about tough matchups. Here's one right here. Harrington trying to bring it up against Dixon. And the quickness. Gracious. Steel numbers, Leron Profit. Slot on that list is about to become number four. Maybe not tonight, but it's coming. You know that for sure. Dixon's made such an imprint on the school record book. Holding for Blake. Dixon leads all scorers first in double digits, 11. And Bill Self needs to take a timeout because after the Maryland timeout, it's a 6 0 run for the Turks. But one of the things about Juan Dixon that's made him an even better player, if there's such a thing, is his ability to find ways to score at different points on the floor. You think of him as a jump shooter, but you don't think of him as a post-up guy. Here, a nice job getting position and finding the basket down low. That's a lost art for backcourt players. Today, they like to face, shoot long jumpers, but you got to practice every spot on the floor because that's where your opportunities come. First team ACC last couple of years. You wonder coming in from his coach, what did he expect from Juan Dixon in 2001-2002? Well, he's worked hard on developing some ways he can get shots off easier. He, he's not the biggest guy. Um, I think he really looks at Allen Iverson a, a, as somebody uh, to, to learn from, uh, to see how Iverson creates space for himself on the basketball court when everybody knows Iverson's going to shoot the ball well. It's kind of the same with Juan. People know that he's going to take a lot of shots for us, and how can he keep getting open? I think that was his goal this summer, is to increase the number of moves that he does have. Dixon's defensive pressure forced Illinois out of sync on that set. It will stay with the Illini, 26 to shoot. That's an interesting comparison to Allen Iverson, just in the need to get shots off and use that unbelievable athletic ability, point guard skills with the scoring ability of a two guard. Well, I'll tell you what, that post-up move that we analyzed a few moments ago is not something that he learned from Allen Iverson. There's no <laughs> question about it. You know, that's a, a, a definite addition to his repertoire. But 
Gary, I agree with him 100%. When you have a talent like that out on the floor, he's got to find ways because he's the guy that's expected to put the ball in the basket. And Juan Dixon has been a student of this game. Let's see what Illinois can do here. 9 of 22 shooting and sloppy with it. Six turnovers. Well, the difficulty right now is that they're not able to get the ball cleanly inside. That's not going to allow Corey Bradford any openings. Frank Williams is really cold from the field over the last several games for Illinois. Frank is 2 of 7, had an 0 for 7 against Georgia Tech. This is a 2 for Blake. Maryland crashing the glass with Ryan Randall in the game. It's off his hands, but the effort has been great. Well, again, the inability to get the ball inside cleanly has hurt the perimeter game of Illinois because you have no inside-out game. You don't force the defense to shift. There, Archibald's forced to come way outside. Give it to Williams. Williams is not the strongest jump shooter on the floor. He's like the second or third option in that respect. That's where he's strong. Williams has his shot blocked by Drew Nicholas. Dixon, three. Randall missed the putback. And they clear out of the paint. Will be called as a foul on Illinois. Maryland's just getting to the loose balls right now, also. Well, again, the energy in this building, we mentioned it before, the crowd has a tendency to do that, particularly in big games. Trust me, I know. <laughs> on the other hand, though, you know, Illinois, this is where the veterans have to step up and they have to leave with some effort. Right now, they're not getting the same effort that they necessarily need. No one diving on the floor. No one really getting, it at, getting after it on the glass. Luke's on back in. Joins Dixon Nicholas as the three guards as Blake sits in the 4-10 mark. Holden, his jersey was being held by Archibald. Went undetected. Trying to get started. Bradford. Two fouls put. Unaggressive. Ferguson. Denied. And the rebound narrowed. Like the effort from Randall. Here is Nicholas. Has the lane cut off. But it was fouled on the way through. It was Ferguson coming down the lane late. See at the uh, Big Ten ACC Challenge tonight, tomorrow night, and then Thursday night on ESPN. Donovan McNabb trying to get the Philadelphia Eagles going. Taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, who finally got a home win in Arrowhead. NFL tonight with Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and company at 7.30 Eastern. And Mike Patrick, Paul McGuire, Joe Theismann, and Susie Colliver bring it to you at 8.30 Eastern. There are the Eagles doing a slide. The Redskins 0-5 are now 5-5, and and I got in the car. Lenny, I arrived at BWI. It only took one minute to hear how great a coach Marty Schottenheimer is. Well, I'll tell you what. A couple of weeks ago, I was here, and they were ready to hang, Marty. You hear these talk shows, and now you wonder if you're in the same city. <laughs> coach Schottenheimer has got a plan. Gets it done. Of course, the Ravens in this neck of the woods as well. The reigning Super Bowl champ. Off the free throw. Largest lead of the night for the home team. It's an even 10. Just underway on ESPN2 in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. NC State and Ohio State. The Wolfpack off to a good start as Anthony Grundy finds the freshman Josh Powell. First road game of the year for the unbeaten pack. Mike. Okay, Pam, we'll check back on that game happening in Columbus. Where life is good. We beat Michigan in football, so it's a, it's a nice honeymoon for Coach O'Brien for November and December. All feelings are good in Ohio. Maryland by 10. And the star backcourt of the Big Ten, Williams and Bradford, have been very quiet, especially the last 10 minutes. Here's Bradford trying to get on track. Misses the three. He's one of five from the field. Wilcox runs out. Foul pushing back. Well, you saw Illinois try to bring their offense a little bit higher, looking to get some picks to free the jump shooters, trying to get Bradford and get Williams on track. That time Bradford had the shot he wanted. He just couldn't put it down. But he's a rhythm shooter. He's going to need more opportunities to get in the rhythm. Maryland's pressure defense. What's enabled them to keep the ball from going inside cleanly and creating an inside-outside game has really been the difference here against the Illinois offense. Friendly bounce for Wilcox, who averages nine in the first four games of his early season. And right now, has nine. 
And a perfect night go. Sorry. Cook was foul. Well, Chris Wilcox came into this game shooting 29% from the free throw line, so we're not going to blame you totally. Thank you, thank you so much. Third ACC Big Ten Challenge. The entire ACC involved with the 11 of the Big Ten, Purdue and Michigan. They're sitting out this year. Illinois, 35% after a good start. Remember, the Illini, for those of you just joining us, jumped out to a 17-10 lead and were six for their first 11. But they've hit three of their last 16 shots with that cook miss. And Wilcox is just cleaning the world up, too. Nine points, four boards off the bench. And feeling it. For Paglia, the rebound for Illinois. Ball penetration, Maryland's getting just about any shot they want. Conversely, Illinois is working for everything that they can possibly get on the other end, again, because of that Maryland defense. Maryland's opponents have shot 35% from the field. The early opponents were uh, better than the last two. Arizona and Temple, the first two games. American and Delaware State, the last two. We'll talk Buckeye basketball. Digger on Duke. And uh, Mr. Jordan <laughs> in action as Mr. Phelps and Ms. Ward. Cam and Digger in the studio for Sports Center in game coming up. With that. Speaking of John Lucas, his coaching debut year with the Cleveland Cavaliers, I just kind of hated to see that. Jordan rocks Cleveland. That doesn't mean he has yet, it just means the place is rocking because he's there. Williams missed the second. Kripalia didn't get the tip, but forced Maryland to get a hand on on the way out of bounds. Cook playing still with a couple of fouls here. Has two points, but has to be careful in this last 246. Step out and shoot three. Not getting fouled out there. And that's a guy that can certainly do it. Ryan, Ryan Cook with versatility. Just demonstrated there the ability to step outside when things aren't going well inside. Four of nine on the season. Nicholas had a nice lane cleared for him by holding. It's off Illinois. Boy, I am really impressed by Drew Nicholas. We talked about him having difficulty shooting. Came into the, tonight's game shooting one for eight from three-point land. Instead of trying to settle for the jump shot, he's taking it upon himself to be more aggressive, creating stuff off the dribble. The last couple of possessions, he's really taken it to the hole and made good things happen. Nicholas has had an impact on this team like Mouton had off the bench early part of last year. A third guard with energy. No goal, and that's going to be on Wilcox. A little holy breath moment for the Illinois folks on who that foul was going to be called against. A little hand play by Chris Wilcox. There's the feed inside. Really to get a chance to see it. But as the defender was getting his arm around, I think Wilcox kind of had a little bit of contact there. The officials trying to clean up the inside play. Williams tries to take Blake for Polio, the putback. Yugoslav born 6'9 senior, Demir Kropalia. Illinois, edging within five. Again, we talked about the veterans stepping up. You see Kropalia senior lighten this team up a bit. Time 15 on the clock. Nicholas working on Luther Head. Wilcox really wanted that ball. Propalia, as usual, has done all the little things. He rebounds, tip to get it done. There's the pressure on Frank Williams once again, making it very difficult to get anything started. This ball played by Propalia. That's offensive foul. Foul three on Cook. That really hurts Illinois. Well, Just at the point did. where you're going to get him out, you know, with two. Absolutely, and you know that Cook was starting to get some rhythm, and right here tries to take the baseline. Nice job by Holden. I don't think Holden gets that call if Cook doesn't bend and dip that shoulder into him. It's one of the problems of a 6'10 guy who can handle so well, is comfortable at least handling, and those, those things are more likely to happen. But again, you give Holden a lot of credit. You don't see 6'10", 6'11 guys taking charges on the baseline that often anymore either. Not like in your day, man. Yeah, I've got a few <laughs> bangs and bruises that still bother me to prove that. 
We're back to five, and Cook's on the bench with three. You just sense Bill Self was trying to get away with as much as he could. Dixon on the take. Saved by Holden. 15 to shoot. Nicholas will stroke three. And we talked about Nicholas' struggles on the perimeter, but I'll tell you what, going to the basket, getting a couple of layups makes it so much easier when you have to pull up and shoot a jump shot. You're not worried that you're over. You just get in the rhythm. Really struggles from outside the arc in the first four games. Moving screen on Archibald. I think Bill Self definitely wants to get Robert Archibald out of the game. He's already got Brian Cook saddled with three fouls. He can't afford to have both his big men in foul trouble. And it is Archibald that takes the seat, despite the protestation of Archibald. That's his second with 42 and a half seconds to go. Seven foot two freshman Nick Smith. Come in. Juan Dixon. One and one. Standing free throw shooter off to a perfect start this season. Now you take a look at Illinois, and in all fairness, coming into this game, they just came off a relatively tough trip. At Las Vegas, had a couple of days here to practice and kind of shake the uh, the time walk off. But it just doesn't seem as though they're in sync right now. And sitting around can do that as much as travel. Been away from campus for about a week. That no classes Thanksgiving break. With the turnout, Las Vegas, three games out in Vegas for that. And as you mentioned, come here yesterday, play this Tuesday night. Ten seconds the difference, game and shot clock. Bradford cannot find anything. One of six. Mouton calling for it. Nicholas taking it. Illinois takes the deep shot. Maryland is running out. And there's no hope of the guards catching up. This place may be 47 years old and on its final year, but it can still rock. At the break, the Terps by 12. Speaking of Terps, here's Pan with Diggers. ...in PlayStation 2 and in part by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. It's been that kind of half for Illinois. 31-12 over the last 12 minutes of the first half. Thus, Maryland leads by a dozen. We welcome you back for the second half. Mike Tirico, Len Elmore. What happened from an Illinois standpoint? Well, it's been picture perfect Maryland defense. Illinois, 29 points and a half, and they've really made it tough, the Turks have, for Illinois to get the ball inside cleanly. And when that happens, it really hurts the perimeter game of Illinois. So Bradford and Williams haven't really had good looks at the basket either. Bradford and Williams, the guys who have to get it going for them, have not. A total of 3 of 16 for those two starting backcourt men. Illinois opens up in the zone right now, recognizing they've had such a difficult time in a man-to-man -man matchup against Maryland. Dixon is trying to help make any defense pointless. One leads all scores with 16, and 15 is the largest lead of the night. They set the players as Paglia starts the second half for Illinois, trying to, as Lenny mentioned, be big with Archibald and Cook. Here is Archibald connecting on a little jumper, the senior from Baldwin, Missouri, born in Scotland. Robert Archibald. Pressure outside. Illinois trying to change defenses a little bit, trying to get Maryland out of rhythm. Remember, three fouls of 34 in blue. Cook, the best big man. Blake got room for that nice little bounce pass. Baxter had nothing going. Reed team Blake. Back to back threes to start the half from Blake and Dixon. Blake with three. 8.7 assists for Steve. 16 is the largest lead of the night. Corey Bradford overhandled. Dixon almost dumped it away. 
Here's Frank Williams. Sal. <laughs> That's when you're too big and too strong and you just happen to be standing there. I tried to stop. I really did. <laughs> There's that little white line where you try to stop every time you see a stop sign. And sometimes. Wow. <laughs> I'm not so sure. Like I said, you got broad shoulders. They can get you in trouble. His second, just one on the team. It's the only player with three fouls. No Maryland player has three. Dixon went for the steal. Still, Bradford cannot find the hot handle from the outside. Jump ball before the timeout was called. Archibald tried to steal a timeout there. Jump ball, possession arrow to Illinois. Again, possession arrow, no toss at center court here tonight. When you take a look at this comparison right now, obviously Maryland has gotten a better deal right now with their players, Dixon and Blake. But the biggest problem for Bradford and Williams is the fact, again, Archibald and Cook not able to get anything started inside. And particularly for Bradford, he's the kind of guy that needs to flow into the jump shot. He's not going to beat you off the dribble, pull up, and hit the jumper. That's not in his offensive character, so to speak. He needs guys playing with him. Bradford has not hit a three. That streak no longer going, but still a great three-point shooter. Cook couldn't get the flush after the Williams miss. Four white shirts to two blue. Blake stepped out of bounds as he went to get there for three. Gary Williams cannot believe Frank Scagliata right in front of him. Saw something Gary didn't see. I see that's what happens when you're shooting so well. There's just not enough room out there on the floor. <laughs> you step back as far as you want when you hit like Steve Blake. Frank Williams can get going. It's been 18 minutes since he hit a field goal. And a steal by Dixon. And he'll lay it in. could be in trouble early in the season. Well, Maryland's dominating in the second half against Illinois, and it's the interior defense that's doing the job. We'll take a look right here at Byron Mouton. Hold it right there. Watch him get around front. That's what causes the ability of Juan Dixon to shoot the gap. The ball has to go back outside, and there's Dixon, as Archibald never saw him coming. And it's the pressure on the interior, that type of defense that's created problems for Illinois, not able to get any perimeter game going. And Dixon, who got it going early, 21 of the loss to Arizona, 25 in the victory over Temple in the Coaches versus Cancer Icon Classic. 18 here to start the ACC Big Ten Challenge. And look how far out Frank Williams has to receive to try to start the offense. And the idea of going big didn't go very far. In the early part of this half, Archibald misses and Mouton gets the rebound. Again, when Illinois gets the opportunities inside, they're so out of rhythm, out of sync, that they're not really to get set. Dixon beat Bradford, used the window to get to 20 points. Oh, Dixon. The clinic right now, execution on the offensive end, tough-nosed defense on the defensive end for Maryland. Rapalia trying to get close, force a feed, Mouton the steal. Finds Baxter. Beautiful hustle by Cook. And they head out of bounds. Mouton takes a tumble. 20 point lead. And Mouton ran into a young man sitting down there. He's worried about the youngster. He's okay. Kid may not take a bath for a while. His hero got a little sweat on him. <laughs> Once again, nice setup by Juan Dixon. Used the pick perfectly. Bradford gets no help. And you talked about being out of sync. Dixon got banged up a little bit there. He's equal to Ron Prophet's career steal mark. Check him over on the sideline. Bradford beat defensively on that trip. Also a seat on the bench. Same with Propalia for Illinois. A change in the lineup. Bill Self's looking for something. In 23 and a half minutes, Illinois has hit 12 field goals. 12 of 37. Number two, losing to number four. One against 13 from Chicago coming up right after we're done. Frank Williams fouled on the drive by Blake. 
interesting move by Frank Williams. He recognizes his team has got to get something started. We talked about the fact that he's not particularly a scorer unless his team needs him. Second, the team. Boy, do they need him right now. Absolutely. No chance of getting a good shot off there. And Landon Ferguson, and he calls for the foul. Bill Self looking for explanations anywhere. Frank Williams absolutely trying to get something started to force on the offensive end. That's something that he's got to be able to stay away from. His job right now is to create for himself and for his teammates. Frank, not a big fan of this event. Remember how he struggled against Duke as a freshman. Baxter. Holden tried the weak side tip. Couldn't get it to go. Five on four. Harrington saved it to Ferguson. Lake picked up another foul. But I will say this, Bill Self may have found something here in Blandon Ferguson. He's the one guy who's been able to get the ball into the paint, put the pressure on the Maryland defense, and make something happen. Steve has two years. Ferguson, same high school as Jason Kidd. From Northern California. Hook left alone. An easy dunk for the junior from Lincoln, Illinois. Brian Cook. Knocked down to 18. Illinois once led by seven. That's Cook. A tie up with Archibald, and I think Frank Scagliata has, I know for a fact, he has Archibald <laughs> for the foul. Now, both Illinois and Maryland, great basketball seasons, great football seasons as well. We're going to speak to the coach of the ACC champs, Ralph Friedgen, when we come back. Well, the Maryland fans usually are starting to get going this time of year, but they have been full tilt for the last two months because of this guy. We're joined by Ralph Friedgen, the coach of the ACC football champs. It sounds good, doesn't it? It sure does. It sounds great. You know, we're real excited about it and looking forward to going to the bowl game. Well, Maryland winning the uh, ACC, the BCS bid, you getting the job in your first year in Maryland alum, it meant so much to you this job and the opportunity in your wildest dreams did you think we'd be talking about what BCS game you'd be going to like I said before I dream wild so yes <laughs> really did you dream that wild? I've always, I've always thought we could be a good football time I didn't, didn't know what happened this soon and we had a lot of unselfish players that just played hard the ball bounced our way and you know we were able to win a couple of tough games and something good happened you see Maryland in the top 10 nationally so too is Illinois Ron Turner's fabulous football job they're the Big Ten champs and uh, going to a BCS Bowl as well. And Florida's the only other school in the top ten in both. Well, Ralph, you take a look at the, the atmosphere on campus right now. I know you as a player here a while back, and I can say that because we were around at around the same time. But the atmosphere seems to be something that Maryland hasn't seen in a long, long time. Obviously, the responsibility of the football team has a lot to do with it. Well, everything's so positive right now. When I came in, there was a tre tremendous amount of apathy. And uh, winning does a lot for the whole university and uh, the fact that our basketball team went to the final four and that now that our football team is in the BCS it just does tremendous things to the university and you know Len, I've always said you can do both you can have a great academic institution and you also can have a great athletic one. You guys have absolutely proved that. Holden the foul is third he sits Ferguson's hit a couple of free throws now a 16 point game as Drew Nicholas tries to get a couple back from Maryland. Illinois, a chance here with a better foul. This one on Mouton. Atmosphere in this place. We're right. talking about the last season in Cole. It's got to be nice for you as an alum, somebody who's been around here, to see this hard nosed, physical kind of basketball one last season in this building. I think they're going to miss that. I don't know what the new Comcast Center is going to be like, but I know this. We're going to get this in Bird Stadium every game. We had it for one this year. Now I'm going to keep this same enthusiasm on the football field. I was here week one when you beat North Carolina and you took the uh, team over to the student section to sing the, the fight song and that thing built and built and built and at the end of the year that final game on ESPN 2 against NC State the atmosphere was incredible. Well it was, you know the band asked me to come over and speak to them and, I, and when I got over there they challenged me to sing the fight song and of course I'm an alumnus so I knew the fight song and I told them that um, we'll sing it again at four o'clock on September 1st when we played North Carolina and uh, I went over there and I don't know if they knew why I was there but I kind of went to the band you know let's go and <laughs> it built into a tradition of you know it's 
I, I, it's not really me if you know me. <laughs> That's right. It's, but it's you know all the characters, you know. You knew all the words, though. That was great. <laughs> hey, I've seen a lot of the deans of the school of the schools here in Maryland running around with red dyed hair. What's the story behind that? Well, they made a bet, Len, that uh, if we won ten games, they, all the deans at the university would dye their hair red. And uh, on Monday they did it, and it was just a tremendous thing for school spirit. Uh, the the acknowledgement from the academic community that our athletic programs are doing well and you know that's a, that was a dream of mine that to come in here and see both achieve uh, yeah. is just a tremendous thing but that's not one of the deans right <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i need to get some kids in that school if it is <laughs> oh that's great well ralph uh, congratulations on a great year i know you're waiting to find out orange bowl sugar bowl there is a chance you could play illinois although it's unlikely it's a possibility that's a goaltender it's a, no matter who it is, it's going to be a wonderful experience for all of you. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you very much, Mike. Ralph Thanks. Regan, Coach of the Year in college football in 2001. It's going to be at the awards show on ESPN next week. In Thanks, Ralph. Here, Illinois has scored the last six in sloppy fashion. They kind of a free throw here, a goaltender, as you just saw there. And it's gone from 20 to 14 at the 14-minute mark. So, hanging around time is stopped by Wilcox's second alley you go. Speaking of hanging around, we talked about Chris Wilcox's explosiveness. All you got to do is get it up around the rim. And watch out for the turnover. Maryland feeds on this. This foul's on Illinois. Wilcox's athletic ability brings so much to the floor. Well, you're going to take a look right here. A nice job of definitely moving the ball around. There's Wilcox. He's just going to go straight to the paint as Cook turns his back. Gets caught up in a pick a little bit. But if you give Chris Wilcox any type of daylight above the rim, he's the guy that's going to go get it. And again, we're talking about an emerging star right here. If he understands how good he can possibly be in another year or so, he's going to be one of those all ACC performers. Well, Archibald going for the loose ball got the foul, so he picks up his fourth. Cook has three. The big guys haven't been scoring as much as the Maryland big guys. And the guards, Williams and Bradford, have had a bad night, to be honest. Dixon sees Luther Head guarding him, and he wants to introduce Luther Head, the freshman, to a game on the road against an ACC team. Baxter, been very quiet tonight. Baxter is just one of six from the field. Three points, three boards. If I told you that Maryland was up 16, you'd be surprised. But Lonnie picked up a foul as well, his third. Well, that's one of the luxuries of having the depth that Maryland has. You know, the star performer is not performing up to those standards, and you don't need them. Go back and get Taj Colgan off the bench. Baxter having three. Well, we talked about it at the beginning of the telecast, Robert Archibald, very foul prone this year. A lot of it has to do with difficult matchups for him. Not really a guy that can go out on the perimeter and play people. He's averaged four fouls a game thus far this season. And he's going to have to find a way to stay on the floor if Illinois hopes to stay in that lofty position in the top five. Brian Cook's foul trouble against Arizona in the regional final last year changed the complexion of that game as Illinois was denied. And the Oakson's team made the trip to the final four. Cook one of two. It's 15 at the 13 point mark. He started thinking if you're Illinois, get to 10 by the 10 minute mark. Hold in the weak side over Cook. And even when Illinois plays pretty good defense, forces a bad shot, there's a breakdown on the weak side. We talked about being out of rhythm, out of sync. You're seeing it from a very good team. For Paglia, fake the three. A nice feed to head. And that's good for Luther. Freshman out of Chicago Manly High School. Kid out of the Chicago Public League. So important to this Illinois program. And they haven't had since back in 94. Wilcox has Dixon flying in. You know, if you're Bill Self, you got to be frustrated because you tell your guys, look, if we can cut it to 10 with 10 minutes left, we got a shot. But each time they make a good play defensively, there's been a breakdown somewhere else. Two. Four on the line. Bradford finally gets going with his score, and it's 15. But again, the breakdown. Here's a nice job defensively. Good help by Propolia. And here's Juan Dixon untouched straight down the middle. 
Somebody just blew an assignment right there. And then he had Holden, the weak side put back on the prior trip. Outstanding numbers for Juan. Perhaps another 30-point scoring game. He's had five in his Maryland career. Mouton, Nicholas Dixon. Dixon got it. Turned on head. And this foul on Maryland, the seventh on the Terps. The seven fouls here in the first half of the second half, and we'll have free throws coming up for the number two team in the nation. And again, Bill Self trying to find the right combination, bringing Nick Smith in the game right now. He sees his team just on the verge of making a nice mm -hmm. run, but he's got to find the guys that are going to play cohesively. Everyone has to take care of business at this point, because one breakdown obviously kills a comeback. Rare to see a seven-footer in the orange and blue of the Illini. It's been 13 years since Illinois had a seven-footer. One and one for Demir Kapalia. You can tell by his style of play if you don't watch the Big Ten very often, if you're an ACC fan, and why this guy missed a bunch of games for different reasons. Knee is scope, on the floor, banging knees, elbows, shoulders. He's a scrapper, he's tough. And all you need to know is he was the MVP of the tournament, not as a starter. You rarely see that. Missed the second, the number is 14 as we move inside of 12 minutes. You gotta give the voters some credit who recognize the guy that has impact, not just scoring. Head was holding Dixon as he cut for the basket. Official timeout as they Stretch out Wilcox. Dixon was banged up earlier in this half. Maryland's a little oh, beat up, but up 14 will make the aches go away quick, especially when you can do that. In Columbus, NC State got off to the fast start against Ohio State, but here come the Buckeyes. That's Brent Darby nailing the three, three of his eight points. Buckeyes up by two at the half. Now back to Mike and a guy I saw play a little bit at Cole Field House in his day, Lenny Elmore. Yeah, Lenny's number hangs from the rafters here at Cole. He'll be moving to the Comcast Center, I believe. Right? They're going to move the numbers. We got room for the numbers in the new place? I don't know. They probably got a closet or two out there <laughs> somewhere. 14 is the number right now. Mouton is fired. And there's Another opportunity for Illinois, trying to get Williams and Bradford going. That time, a conscious effort to block out Bradford travel. Mm. Still can't do it. Juan Dixon's had it going, though. First half, he picked it up in the second as well. Well, certainly he picked up where he left off, finding different ways to score in the offense, in the defense, and certainly here in the paint. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, throughout the first half, he's finding different ways to score. Just makes him a much more dangerous player. Taj Holden tries a triple. Baxter, good rebound. Bonnie for Polly out of the way. It's the second field goal for the senior out of Silver Spring here in Maryland. And he bears repeating every time Illinois seems to be getting themselves in sync doing the right things there's always one breakdown and it hurts the effort here we go again 15 to shoot freshman Luther head this fire Bradford try to make it happen on the glass I just didn't think we'd see both Williams and Bradford play this poor game hold it all the way offensive In addition to looking for position, as the basket did not count, also is the player in control or not? Well, right here, you take a look. He kind of took off. Once a player leaves the floor, the defender can't step underneath him. And if you're Taj Holden, actually, if you're Gary Williams, you hate to see that play happen despite the score because you don't get Taj Holden putting it on the floor going to the basket that often. Yeah, exactly. And Taj now has four personal fouls. on the team. Gary Williams, who's known both leagues in this uh, ACC Big Ten Challenge from his days in Columbus. Also, days at Boston College. Actually brought a number eight ranked BC team in here to, as a coach against Maryland. One of the rare other top ten non-conference meetings here. 
Free throw opportunities coming up for Illinois in the second half. Maryland over the limit. Here's the schedule for Wednesday, day two, the ACC Big Ten Challenge. The game from Atlanta starts from here on ESPN. Michigan State takes on Virginia. And uh, as Lenny pointed out before, the Cavs can put up some points. Well, they absolutely can. It's a, it's a team that if they understand the defensive end, how to use those same skills on defense and stop some people, they're going to be awfully dangerous, more so than they are now. Michigan State, on the other hand, are going to face another swarming defensive team, maybe even a little bit better, a little bit quicker than Syracuse, the team that they had trouble with in the preseason NIT. That's the action doubleheader tomorrow, right after Sports Center, and then it's 7.30 Eastern on ESPN2. The foul was on Baxter, both he and Holden have four, so the big guys are in some foul trouble. The lead is 14 at the 10-minute mark. And those of you who know Illinois basketball know that number 30 has been a part of some great comebacks even after cold shooting games. Important minutes for Ryan Randall, 33, with Wilcox, the big presence. Randall missed. Wilcox couldn't get the follow. Illinois will have a chance to get it down to 12 or 11 on this trip. Well, again, you want to get the ball in Frank Williams' hands. This is time for execution on the other end. This last trip defensively, finally Illinois was able to play without the breakdown. Force Maryland in a tough shot. And they need to replicate those types of trips to get back into this ballgame. Take a look at Maryland now going to zone, a 1-2-2. Two, two. Again, trying to throw Illinois off rhythm a little bit, something that they've been able to do pretty much this whole game. Bradford, no threes tonight, had an 88 consecutive game streak of making a three that was stopped last year against Wisconsin. On the take, it is Bradford, 12-point game. Hanging around. And Gary Williams knows it, he wants to just let his guys know time for some good, fundamental, solid trips. They can't play any worse in the Illinois backcourt, so maybe they can turn it around. Well, Corey Bradford, again, playing him for the jump shot is a mistake this year because he's going to put it on the floor, take it to the basket. Last year with the bad knee, he was a little hesitant to explode. But maybe he's got it going right now. A lead that was 20 is now 12. As you see, uh, Bradford, it was the Purdue game that stopped that uh, streak, then he got it back going against Wisconsin. School's all-time leader in threes, but tonight, 0 for 4 from behind the arc for the 99 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Duke and Iowa will follow. It's John Saunders and Dick Vitale in Chicago for that one. Number one against number 13. And don't miss that one. Obviously, we know how dominant Duke can be, but there's a guy by the name of Mr. Reggie Evans playing inside for Iowa that can present an awful lot of problems for that Duke front line. Come up at 9 Eastern in Sports Center. Good night here on ESPN. We do the same thing. Two of the best leagues in the country, the ACC and the Big Ten. Back to back basketball double dips. Just 10 on the shot clock now. No flow. Dixon will force three. And it goes over the top. Well, that time Illinois extended their defense, something they probably didn't want to do because Maryland had had their way in the first half when they extended defense. But this time, extra effort forced Maryland in a bad shot. And here again, the veteran team and the veteran players have to step up in execution. Ferguson, the junior. Here's Williams. Good take by Ferguson. Could not finish, though. He's got Blake. Just wanted to make sure that Williams had Juan Dixon, his man, defensively. Wilcox being physical with Cook. Back to right in. Count into the foul. Now, quite honestly, if I'm Bill Self, I got to quibble with this call. He did. Looking Wilcox <laughs> twice now. Backs into his man, Cook. Lowers the shoulder, gets himself in good position. Take a look at it from the ground angle right there. One, two. You know, two opportunities to call an offensive foul. And Cook has picked up his fourth personal foul. So Cook and Archibald, the big men starting for Illinois. And Holden and Baxter, the big starters for Maryland. Four fouls apiece. Wilcox rimmed out. 
for the Americans, Drew Nicholas. Bradford and Williams, 5 of 23 tonight. And they're still within 14. I say still because that's a surprise. For Polyet, too. Surprise because they're still hanging around. Maryland's played a good, solid game. A good night from Dixon. Wilcox off the bench with 13. But at 12, Illinois is forcing you to keep the remote down. <laughs> and not go check out the NC State Ohio State game on ESPN 2. And I'll give you another one. Maryland's got to be careful. They've got to continue to aggressively attack. Because when you decide you want to start milking the clock with 726 left, you start losing your momentum and you give an opening, a little sliver of daylight to a team like Illinois. Ferguson's fourth foul. So Ferguson joins Cook and Archibald. We'll bring Juan Dixon to the line. Of Personal story of, of his parents uh, both passing away when he was young and Juan Dixon raised by his brother Phil. Uh, you've watched his career grow over the years, Lenny, and chance to be a three-time All-ACC performer. John Lucas did that before. Juan Dixon means so much on the court, but his uh, story of survival after troubles off the court is just as exhilarating as the points he's put up tonight with 23. Well, when you speak to the young man, you know he's just got a tremendous belief in himself, tremendous amount of courage. You know, after watching his, his family ravaged by an insidious disease, he's still able, he and his brother, to pick themselves up and be successful. Phil is a police officer in Baltimore. He was a pretty good basketball player in his own right. Okay, Division three. And then the hoe, as a matter of fact. Dixon, I saw him before the game. So how you doing? He said, I'm doing okay. You know, I'm not eating that great. Junk food, college life. <laughs> you want to, you can. He said, well, I'm thinking about it. Maybe it's time for me to start eating. Oh, He's just that kind of guy. You put a seed in his brain. Like, I can take that and run. 11 points. Time out. With producer Bo Garrett, director Doug Holmes, Mike Tirico, Len Elmore. Glad you're here for the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports. If you look at the preseason top ten over the first three plus weeks of the season, we've seen everybody but Missouri, Illinois, and Duke get knocked off there. What does that tell you, Mr. Elmore? Well, actually, what it tells me is that people are playing pretty good schedules. The parity and and I hate that word, but we got to use it for lack of a better one. The parity in college basketball today, where you've got so much talent evenly distributed. But more than anything else, all those teams that we saw, they're going to be around in March. Mm -hmm. They're going to have an opportunity to get stronger, better, understand who they are. And uh, we're just going to see some terrific basketball at that time. Nicholas, a three. Is not the best offensive set in the history of basketball. Illinois can get it to single digits here. What about 6 and 40 to go? Well, if you're Maryland, you had to believe that Illinois, as good a team as they are, they're going to make a run at you. The key is whether you can withstand it. Good defense. Carpaglia lost it. Nicholas chased by Bradford. By Williams, excuse me. And Drew has his first point to this half. Ten for the game. Third Maryland player in double figures. No Illinois players in double figures. Boy, if this is a prize fight, you got one guy trying to come back from a near knockout and taking a couple of body blows that takes the air out of you makes you start all over again that's what happened on that steal but illinois is showing some resiliency right now and again it goes back to experience as much as skill for polia put back williams wide right shot it's 11 inside of six minutes Wilcox. so impressive we're going to fight for that board over archibald Nearly draw the foul, but Bradford comes away with it. And he wants it stopped because the ball is sopping wet. Hey, you know what? That's an excellent play by Corey Bradford. You know, he had the presence of mind to ask the official to stop it, knowing his team needed a little blow, and that the ball was pretty unmanageable. You take a look right here. There's Wilcox using that big, strong body on the jump hook. Now watch Archibald on the floor. Right there, he gets up off the floor and gets his hands into it and creates something. And here's where Bradford calls for an official timeout to get a dry ball. Nick and Archibald playing with four. You have to at this point in the game. Once we get inside of five minutes, it's Frank Williams' time. He nearly had it taken away by Dixon. Forced one. And the rebound by Blake. Well, he had Bradford open for that three. Didn't choose that option. Nicholas. Oh, five. Baxter! Number five on Cook. 
He's gone. Drew Nicholas making like one of the Nicholas brothers dancing in the middle. First down the line. And watch this nifty pass. No look. That just comes from playing together. Second nature right there. Somebody's highlight reel. It's not going to be Illinois, but somebody's highlight reel is going to get that one. Cook done for the night. Eight points, seven boards. And three of five shooting. But if there is something you have to worry about if you're an Illinois fan, it's that guy, Mr. Basketball in 99 in the state of Illinois. And Archibald that Lenny talked about earlier. Big guys need to stay on the floor because you have such a versatile player in six foot eight Lucas Johnson not playing. We, we didn't mention it earlier. The torn ACL suffered a month ago. It's going to keep Johnson out. They hope until February and a chance to get him back. But until then, you lose a guy who would have been a six foot eight starter on your team. Changes the whole mix for Bill Self. Well, certainly with Lucas Johnson, I mean, it's a guy that brings attitude to the floor for Illinois. You know, you want to crash the boards, you want to play tough D. You know, this is the guy that starts it all for them. You know, kind of liken him to, you know, one of those WWF kind of wrestlers. I think he's got a career going and after this thing. But that's the kind of attitude yep. he brings, and he's not ashamed of it. And Baxter will come to the line. One of those underrated recruits. I could sit here and tell you who the four guys are that each school signed. Promising recruiting class, top 100. But you have to remember they're in high school, and you never know. Because Lonnie Baxter wasn't on a bunch of lists as a super stud high school player. He's come in as Gary Williams, the most underrated recruit, and done a great job. ACC Big Ten Challenge continuing. It's Duke and Iowa. John Saunders, Dick Vitale standing by for that one in Chicago. Then Minnesota Wake Forest on ESPN2 at 9.30 Eastern. And Mike, you talked about Illinois fans not wanting to see Brian Cook go off the floor. The bright side is Maryland shooting 54% from the free throw line coming into this game in a close game situation. That could be their Achilles heel. Harrington's pass is deflected. Frank Scagliato says, I saw you tip it, Wilcox. When they go to the new building, the Comcast Center, you're still going to have that closed-in feel. The first 10 rows all the way around are going to be students. So it's still going to have that intimidation factor. The uh, officials will still have the pleasure of hearing from some of the Maryland faithful. The Times can be a little over the line. But the Times can support their team like they should. When Todd Holden comes up with a block like that. Well, if you're Taj Holden on, no, if you're Gary Williams, you want him to try to keep that in bounds. They had a chance to control it. You block the shot, you keep it in bounds, give your team a chance to get possession instead of re-triggering for the other team. Archibald able to keep it, but you see he's got shot clock issues. Got to do something. Head finally seen by Harrington, the best three-point shooter in the league last year with a three that will energize the blue and orange. Eight-point game. Four and a half to go. Hasn't been this close since the uh, four or five minute mark. First half. Get a good shot if you're Maryland. Work your offense. Big guys touch it. Harrington came down to knock it away. Wilcox kept it alive. No shoot free throws. Well, if you're Illinois, you realize that that's the right guy you want to foul. We talked about Chris Wilcox and his free throw shooting woes. Came into this game shooting 29%. Yesterday, he worked for about a half hour doing nothing but shooting free throws, trying to tinker with his stance with his release. What you hate about this? Free throw shooting is one of those things that when it starts, it's hard to get away from being a bad free throw shooter. You know, it's one of those things that hangs with you all year. Lead is nine as Wilcox hits the second one. Well, we talked about this building, the final season of 47 in historic Cole Fieldhouse that has seen a couple of final fours. Historic ones to bat in 66 and 70 right down the road. Opening in September, 17,000 seats, 20 suites, 20 more than you have in here. The Comcast <laughs> Center of the students around. There's some of that uh, concourse level as uh, they have 
set forward a great plan and the university needs it Gary Williams said you know, on game day you can dress this puppy up and it looks pretty darn good but night in night out Cole Fieldhouse yeah, it's a little worn it's time to move on <laughs> uh, and, uh, speaking of worn see how close they are to the light bulbs when the <laughs> lights go off they use it to kind of shine get the dirt off but, uh, you know the one thing about losing Cole Fieldhouse obviously bittersweet awful lot of memories here a few ghosts as well you know talk about that number retired uh, honored up there Lenny the only Maryland player in history 1,000 career rebounds Archibald lost it out of bounds Illinois turned it over in a big spot final official timeout inside of four minutes Bill Self's team has done nothing tonight but they've got a chance within nine going down to the wire in Springfield Oregon and UMass Micah Brand for the Minutemen, inside gives him the two-point lead. Brand has added a free throw. You mass up three. You actually hit two, Mike. All right, Pam. Coach Lapis getting it done in the early days at UMass. Here's our reset. Maryland by nine. Each team can stop the clock twice. Every Illinois foul. One and one. The next one, I should say. Every Maryland foul is two free throws for Illinois. Duke in Iowa come next from Chicago. John Sauter, Dick Vitale settling in. Oh, John settled in. Dick is shaking hands with everybody in the building right now. Foul on Frank Williams. The ACC Big Ten Challenge continues on ESPN. One and one for Maryland after the ninth foul. Well, we talk about Williams, and he and Bradford have not done it tonight. Five of 26 combined shooting. Total of only 14 points, while Dixon and Blake have 33. And Blake can add to that with his first free throws of the night. Well, and you look at Bradford and Williams, you can place the responsibility on their shoulders to a point. Obviously, with no inside game going for them, it's very difficult to start the perimeter game. And just as importantly, the Maryland defense, pressure, forcing people to put the ball on the floor, move it, never really giving Bradford or Williams an opportunity to gain any rhythm. One of two, the lead is 10. The Williams and Bradford heat up at the end. This guy surely can. Harrington missed the three, rebound Nicholas. Those are the kind of shots Illinois wants. Obviously, Bradford is one of those guys that'd like to get flowing into that three the same way Harrington did. Oh, Dixon corner three. That would have been uh, heads for the exits. We'll keep him around for a while. Transition Bradford. No open shot anytime they put it on the floor. For Polya back it in. Looking for help. Bradford. Using the window. Eight point game inside of three. And it's basic basketball right now. You got to make the stops on the defensive end if you're Illinois. Maryland can take their time now. Plenty of time on the shot clock. This is an opportunity to explore the defense. Force Illinois into a situation they're not comfortable with being in. Wilcox is uh, my MVP tonight. Even though Dixon's had a great game. Wilcox has been terrific. 7 of 12 from the field. 16 points. 6 rebounds. 10 point game for Paglia. Can take one of these three soon. Got close. Couldn't get to. Lots of ball to the floor to keep it alive. And does. Or does it? Harrington could not chase it down. Two thirteen to go. Bill Self has two timeouts. We we'll take one of them here. We have an Illinois timeout. Two thirteen to go. Here's Pam Ward, Sports Center Indian Update. Thank you, Michael. And coming up as soon as Maryland, Illinois finished. How about Iowa and Duke? And look at Dickie V go. He is ready. John Saunders and Dick going to call that game coming up on ESPN. And Mike, you probably got moves like that, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for the leg kick. <laughs> I told you. What did I tell you? John's sitting waiting for the game to get going. And Dick's shaking hands with everybody in the building. Uh, he was shaking more than hands on that one. <laughs> Well, Maryland has a couple interesting games coming up here. Princeton, George Washington, or UConn, and the BB&T tournament, and then the University of Detroit, Dick's old school.
So they play a good non-conference schedule here, and they get tough as, as the days and weeks go on here into December. Well, that's what you want. You want to battle, trust the team. You want them to be in all different types of situations, anticipating what you might see in March. Not like they don't get enough of that in the ACC. That's the great uh, thing about both teams playing a tough schedule, and everybody does now. And you know, all this talk of getting rid of some of the non-exempt tournaments, you know, it's not going to hurt the big guys, because the big guys are still playing their good games. It's going to hurt the mid-majors. And it's also going to hurt the fans, because, again, you want these intersectional kind of rivalries to, to continue. You want to see what your team does against a team from another region that plays a different style. You know, you mentioned the ACC. It's a different season part of the season but those teams know each other so well yes. they're able to anticipate here you're going to be playing different teams at, at different points in time the same way you will be in March. 202 to go and Wilcox and that's exactly what that last time out was all about Bill Self has to find a way to engineer Wilcox getting his hand on the ball a couple of the other guys who are shooting less than 60% for Maryland, which they have a few. Wilcox, two of six at the line here tonight. There he goes, knocks one down. And that's really all Maryland needs from him right now with this type of lead. 50% from the line is good enough as long as they can put some stops on Illinois. 11 at the two minute mark. Must trick for the fighting Illini. Bradford trying to finally get a three and air ball. Smothered by Drew Nicholas. Nicholas tipped it back. Wilcox. Count it and good night. Illinois. Well, this one began with terrific defense by Drew Nicholas. After the missed shot, Maryland obviously gets out and runs, and we talked about it before. Nicholas not only did a great job of playing good defense, hustled down the floor, had the presence of mind to be able to tip the ball back. He couldn't handle the lob, but he found a guy that could. Bradford picked up the foul, his second after the shot, and Bradford goes to the bench. Runs for the night, likely with a rare game without a three-pointer converted. Brett Melton is checked in. Williams on the take. And makes it. And he put it up high on the backboard. You know he's got game. Just hasn't had a chance to show it tonight. Nicholas. And looks like Maryland is going to knock off number two for one more line. And it's historic basketball tenure in Cole Fieldhouse. Williams somehow got that around Wilcox and a foul. Will eliminate Holden from the game. Our 989 Sports Player of the Game. That man, Chris Wilcox, a career high 19 points, six rebounds, and an assist as well. Even though he was three of eight from the line, and Juan Dixon scored 23, it was the energy that he showed tonight, buddy. Well, absolutely, and he's one of those support guys. If Lonnie Baxter and Juan Dixon are going to have consistently good seasons, Chris Wilcox is the kind of guy that has to take the pressure off of those two guys. You know, you add another option on the offensive end, and it just makes you so tough. Returning 35, Lonnie Baxter. Robert Archibald at the line. Archibald, some free throws now. Nice to Corey Bradford when he had the street stop of 88 consecutive games with a three uh, against Wisconsin on Feb 13 of 2001. Nice hand. Holden comes to the bench. He didn't have a three the next couple of games at Indiana and Ohio State. And he said the best thing was that the streak's over. I don't have to talk about the streak anymore. But still, forget the streak part. Duke, Illinois, or Duke, Duke Iowa coming up from Chicago, Illinois. It's not the streak part. It's the fact that that three is such a part of the Illinois offense. He's a good three-point shooter. That's how you can get one in 88 straight games. And tonight, that shot and his offense was not there along with Williams. We had one so you hit the nail play. on the head. That shot was not there for most of this game. And again, you credit the Maryland defense for stepping up, 
getting chest to chest with Corey Bradford and taking it away. When your guards who lead your team shoot seven of 30 combined, you're not going to win many games, many nights. I don't care if you're in Cole against Maryland or if you're against the uh, easiest team in your conference at home. And you hear the chants in the background, ACC, that's what this is all about. It's about bragging rights. Both these teams are going to be around deep into March. And I suspect there may be an opportunity to meet again. Juan knocks them both down. And the fans very close behind us yells, finally, as they see a player convert back-to-back -back free throws. Explosive move by Brandon Ferguson draws the foul. The other purpose of this game is for the coaches, as I mentioned before, to see what they have. You know, see who's able to step up big game situations. And Landon Ferguson is one of those guys I think has been discovered. Bill Self now starts to realize that he can depend on a guy like that in these types of games. Bill Self's team had designs of taking the Maryland record and closing the door on 79 straight on conference games at home. Baxter checks out. Five points, five boards tonight for Lonnie as he fouls out. Two of seven for this year. And if you're Chris Wilcox, you know, you just got taken out to the applause of the fan. <laughs> you're about to grab a cold cup of drink and put a towel on and call it a night. And then you're called back out on the floor. Well, there it is. 80 consecutive non-conference uh, home wins. Not all have been of this quality. Really. <laughs> Don't be on the spot, man. No, I'm not. I'm not. It's, no. It, it is what it is, though. I mean, 80 wins or 80 wins. You got you give Maryland credit this time around, inviting a team like Illinois here to that, test that streak. And that's the part that impresses me. You go back to December of 89. That means answering the bell night after night and having a program where you always have a quality team. Nobody's going to come in here and get you on a night when you're sleeping in a non-league game. Well, last year they had Oklahoma, and years in the past they've had Kentucky. So it wasn't like they had all cupcakes. <laughs> Preseason top 10, you can add Illinois' loss now. It's first of the season. And only Duke and Missouri are unblemished for now. There's Duke playing Iowa. You'll see Missouri later on during the next couple of weeks, and certainly against Illinois. And we might get uh, through the first four weeks of the season with the entire preseason top 10 taking a loss. Well, I'll tell you what, this early in the season, we talked about the loss and we talked about parity, but I think in deep in the recesses of some of these coaches' minds, a loss to a quality team is a good thing because now you get your players' attention. You know, you're going into, you know, part of the season now where you might play another tournament right before exams and Christmas break. You want to get these guys focused, understand where they need the improvement. Illinois recognizes that right now. To play this type of competition on the road just has to be a, a character builder if nothing else. Bill Self has given it the old wave off and for one of the uh, last remaining times in this building, his final season in Coalfield House, they come to their feet and cheer the Turks. Knocking off number two by 13 tonight. Six sixty-three. Juan Dixon in Maryland moves to four and one. Duke in Iowa next. Glenn Elmo, Mike Tirico. Thanks for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. The ACC gets the first one.